It's Simon and Ruth here. This is your Monday morning this morning. Now, we're going to show you some pictures. Have a look at this lady and guess how old she is. I'd say, right. what, f early 40s? Well, you see, that is a lady uh, called Caroline Hartz, and she believes she, you can have your cake and eat it. That's <laughs> what she practices. She is 70 years of age. Look again. Just look again. 70. 70 it years is of age. Amazing. Okay? What is the secret to her youthful looks? Well, it couldn't be more simple. Let's go to Australia, live to Perth, and find out. There she is, 70. You're not kidding us, Carolyn. Are you telling fibs, Carolyn? <laughs> no, no, I'm not telling you fibs. I'd like to say that I had a few extra years up my sleeve, but I don't. I'm 70 and I love every minute of it. You look amazing, Carolyn. You have to tell us your secret. Thank you. Thank you. Well, one of my secrets, of course, is that I stopped eating sugar. I stopped eating sugar 29 years ago now uh, because I was pre-diagnosed with... Uh, oh, sorry, I was diagnosed with pre-diabetes 2 and I got a fright. Yeah, was that a um, shock to you? It wasn't rocket science to me. Yeah, well, you, you thought at that time you were fairly healthy, you weren't overweight? No, I wasn't overweight. I thought I was healthy. I thought I was infallible, as we all do at that age. Um, but I did know that I was an enormous sweet eater. Um, today we call ourselves sugar addicts, and I was a sugar. I was a sweet addict. But then yes, if you're, if you're so, an addict, and a lot of people, Caroline, will identify with that, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, in your case, sugar, and with a lot of people innocently with sugar, does the addiction not override everything else. So how do you prevent the addiction overriding everything else? What got in the way for you? For me, well, I didn't accept the consequences of my sugar addiction. I didn't really know what the consequences would be until I was diagnosed. And so when I was diagnosed with prediabetes 2, I had always been fit and healthy and I did my research and I could see what the effects of diabetes 2 were going to do to me. So that frightened me. And fear, when you're frightened of something, you should change. Yeah. And I did change um, because how... I didn't want to be unhealthy. No. And, and how difficult was that? Explain to us, say, in a normal day, how much sugar you would have eaten, the kind of things you were eating, and how you changed that diet. Well, let's see. It was nothing for me to have a half a cheesecake for breakfast. Um, I would often have not a half a packet of chocolate biscuits, but a whole packet of chocolate biscuits in the afternoon. Um, I would never have one cake. I would have two or three. Um, I would never have one chocolate or two chocolates. I'd have the whole block or the whole packet. And so this is what makes it easier for me to help other people because really they can't tell me anything that I haven't already done. <laughs> I, yeah, I was a sugar addict and, and yeah. you know, lots of people will relate to that. And, and we all do, we do relate to that and then what we tend to do is to find sugar substitutes and we think we're being very good with food or drinks that are termed as diet or light. Where do you stand on those? No, I don't stand at all on those. I don't use artificial sweeteners, I never have. Um, I don't drink anything light. I don't think they're good for you. I, I eat healthy. I think it's better to eat healthy. But I do believe that you don't go without. Once you say, I'm not going to have a sweet, a cake, or whatever your treat is, you're going to want, want it more. I call it my deprivation centre. Once I'm told I can't have it, oh, yes, please, I need it. And uh, so when I discovered uh, xylitol or perfect sweet or you call it total sweet in UK, when I discovered that product, my life changed. So I was able to convert all these wonderful recipes that I used to have before I developed the prediabetes mm. to healthy recipes that I could use. And xylitol, um, Carolyn, of course is, what, I cut is, out. is xylitol is what a natural sweetener then, is it? Yes, it's a natural sugar-free sweetener. And it either comes from the cob of the corn or birch trees. It doesn't raise blood sugar levels. It tastes like sugar and it looks like sugar. And this is what I use in all my but recepes in my sugar-free baking book. Yes, and your, and your sugar-free uh, baking book, I'm just going to show it here. No hidden sugars, no refined sugar, gluten-free. You can have your cake and, and eat it. That is Carolyn's book there. But, Carolyn, how do you get to that stage of 
you have to go through what's termed cold turkey, mm. don't you? I did. Um, people are a little luckier these days because they can use a natural substitute that's sugar-free. When I did it, I didn't have those things, and so I went cold turkey. But there are things you can do to help yourself. Um, for example, you have to eat breakfast. Breakfast, you must have breakfast in the morning when you wake up. I, so I started having breakfast, and that is not half a cheesecake. <laughs> I started to have protein every meal. I started to have eggs and salmon and um, protein in the morning. I made sure that I had protein. When I started, I, I started out by having five small meals a day so that I could maintain my sugar levels. Because what happens when you have a half a cheesecake, your sugar levels skyrocket and then they drop. And it's when they drop that you crave. Yeah. And so if you try and monitor your blood sugar levels, and I did this by having five small meals a day and having protein with every meal, because protein is sustaining. And I'm not saying cut out all the carbohydrates, definitely not. We need okay. carbohydrates. We have carbohydrates in well, fruit, Carla, we have it in vegetables. We're, 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 we're unfortunately reaching the end of our time, and, and you are fascinating to talk about. You warn people about the dangers of, of low fat, and um, you, you talk about the importance of sleep, and that age shouldn't be a barrier, but things tend, a lot of people think, get harder with age. And, and above all, it's about your attitude. Fascinating talking to you. I really do wish we had longer, but unfortunately, we've got to find out what the weather's doing here. So from London to Perth, <laughs> bye-bye, and thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I don't think our weather will be as nice as Perth, but here it is anyway.